on the front row of the grid in pole position. Mick Crump there in the front row also, number 10, having a chat with Frenchman Christian Saron. Saron has a quick word in the ear of Mick Grant, Grant looking decidedly happy. There is number 31, also from France, Patrick Pons, teammate of Saron, and Pat Hedden from America. Will he be able to do what Steve Baker did last year? Number one, Suzuki teammate to Sheen, Steve Parrish. And there's the Ted Broad Yamaha of number eight, Dave Potter, a beautiful machine. Sheen has a last checkup on everything. Up with the visor. His mechanics are still working at the back end of the Suzuki. They're being told to hurry up because the riders have got to go out and do warm, two warming up laps to warm up the tires. Two laps to go. Warm up laps only. The riders out here on slick tires. What is wrong? Sheen is not moving off the grid. What's the problem? As the smoke fills the air, Sheen is still there. Reinstarting the fall, and that's what it is. Sheen has decided to change tires. He's going off a slick tire onto an intermediate tire because the rain is starting to fall, and Sheen has made the decision. The other riders have completed one warming up lap. Sheen looks at the back end of the Suzuki again, pulls it into gear. They finished fitting the other wheel with the intermediate tire. They give him a push, the machine bursts into life, and away goes Barry Sheen. He will only have time for one, one, one warming up lap. The crowd look with consternation. What has happened to their favorite? Is he in trouble? They don't realize what has been happening. Warming up the machine still. There is a treaded tire as being used by one competitor. The flag is raised, engage gear. And away they go. 77, race of the year is underway. And number three, Pat Henning goes, wheels in the air, into an immediate lead. Mick Grunt with him, Barry Sheen also with him. But it's number three, American Pat Hennon into Gerard Ben on the first lap, followed by number 10, Mick Grunt on the big Kawasaki. It's Hennon leading back from Sheen as they go streaming around Gerard Ben. Dave Potter's right there in seventh place. Down Steve Street and into the Lake S's, a right and left hand bend. So it's still number three, Hennon in the lead, Grunt. They've already pulled away and opened up the gap from Sheen. on lap one and it's still Hennon leading Grant with Sheen in third place as they stream round the Herpen sorting themselves and jockeying for position end of lap one Hennon, Grant, Sheen, Marshall and look at the front end of the machine dip as they break hard going into Gerrards Grant has closed up Grant has closed right up on the back end of the leader Hennon, Grant, Sheen still with it, knee right out, and remember that Barry Sheen is riding here with a leg that's giving him great pain he didn't even practice yesterday in the wet because he's a trapped tendon in the knee but now lying in third place and the two leaders starting to open up a gap ahead of him Marshall still in fourth place number nine, John Williams in fifth, but up the inside Hennon on the inside, Grant on the outside doing his best to get past on lap four he can't quite make it, but Sheen moves across the seat of that machine as he goes down the devil's elbow. He's coming back at them again. He's coming back at the two leaders. Ryan Gerrards on lap five, and it's still Hennon in the lead. Grant in second place, and Sheen is closed up. Sheen is closed right up again. He's in the slipstream. Marshall's still in fourth, and Sheen goes down the inside. Sheen outbreaks them both as they go into the S's. So it's number seven, Barry Sheen back in the lead, and number three, number three, Hennon is there with him. Grant tries to go inside. Marshall in fourth, John Williams in fifth, Stan Woods in sixth. Down into the start and finish area, still Sheen from Hennon and Grant. And already look at the cap, they've increased their lead over the fourth place man. Sheen now some two machines lengths ahead of Hennon using every inch of the road right out to the white line going down the back Steve straight three of them the full length of the straight ahead of Roger Marshall so here it is again Sheen Hennon Grant the world champion out in front and even the spectators get as high a vantage point as they can the front end of the machine come up as they change gear the two Suzuki's with the front end up the Kawasaki 
still in the ground, but still with them. 125 horsepower being fed into the back wheel of each of these three machines. And look at that. Up number three goes on the inside of Sheen, going into Gerard. So it's Hennon back in the lead of Sheen in second place. And Mick Grant Kawasaki still in third place. And in the aces, the bit between his teeth now. It's Pat Hennon. Opened up a gap already of some 15 yards. Hennon in the Harpen. Sheen, Grant goes inside Sheen in the Harpen to take second place. So it's Grant back in second. Sheen moves across the machine again as they go down into the devil's elbow. But it's Hennon right out in front. Mick Grant has got this Kawasaki in a Suzuki sandwich. Marshall still in fourth with John Williams in fifth place. And number eight, Dave Potter up in the sixth. So Roger Marshall, Roger Marshall now in fourth place. And the boys at the tail end of the field sorting themselves out as the leaders press on. So remember, the leader is still American, Pat Hennon. And there he goes into the Herbalwood Grant, still right on his tail. Suzuki versus Kawasaki. Dropping off Barry Sheen again. Sheen trying all he knows to get back with them. But Hennon's really on his way now, and Grant's going with him. Grant is staying with him. Here they go again. Ryan Gerrard's they go. Barry Sheen is dropping that little bit further behind. Has he made the big mistake of going on to an intermediate tower? He has a little look down at the left of the machine. The slick tower's warmed up now. And there goes one rider. It's Roger Marshall. Marshall and the machine part company, but Marshall's on his feet. He walks away, and he's and perfectly Marshall okay. Off Marshall off and Roger and Marshall, the back end of the machine, sliding away as he overbreaks, coming out of Gerrard's. The Marshalls pick up the machine, and Roger Marshall is perfectly okay. And Marshall gets himself to a safe position, limping a little, but he's quite all right. He goes over the straw bales to get out of the way of any other mishap that could happen on this Gerard's pen. Back to the start and finish area, and it's Hennon. Hennon goes through. He's some 30, 40 yards ahead of Mick Grant now. Mick Grant safely established in second place. Barry Sheen has dropped back quite a long way in third. Out goes the knee as he flicks down a gear and goes into Gerard. Hennon, legs parallel to the ground. His leathers actually touching the deck at one stage. Grant still with him. Into the S as they go. Hennon in the lead. Grant, his machine twitching as he comes round the second part of this S bend. Sheen not looking as happy now as he was. And here we've number 15, Stan Woods. Stan Woods trying to go around the outside of number 22, the finish rider, Pecky Nurmi, using every inch of the road to do so. Woods is there, and away down Steve Street. There goes the leader, Pat Hennon again. Front end up. Kawasaki still behind him. Sheen still trying to get to terms with him, but still losing ground. Moving back across the seat as he comes down into the start and finish area. The treacherous downhill section, the devil's elbow. Now he goes into Gerrard's. As the leaders come out of Gerrard's, it's Grant still neatly tucked behind that furling of the Kawasaki. Hennon down into the Lake Esses, breaking hard, the front end dipping again. Grant trying, trying very, very hard to get with him. Sheen some 45, 50 yards behind, and Sheen round the hairpin. And already, the other two boys have disappeared down around the devil's elbow. And Sheen goes through. Into Gerard she goes this time. And already, the other two riders, Hennon on the Suzuki and Mick Grant on the Kawasaki, have disappeared from view. Dave Potter still trying to get back with Stan Woods in fourth and fifth position. And so the race goes on. The leader now lapping the back markers. Hennon number three just coming up with a back marker. But Mick Grant is striving to stay with him. There's Barry Sheen well behind now. Not looking at all comfortable. Not going down behind the screen early as he comes out of the Lake Aces. Hennon in underneath a slow rider. Mick Grant round the outside of the same rider. And not letting Hennon get away from him.
and Shane. Shane now looks down. He, he takes his hand off the handlebars, feels the left-hand exhaust pipe. The top one of these four exhausts coming off this four-cylinder Suzuki. His legs out. Sheen is coming into the pits. Gary Sheen is coming into the pits. There's something wrong with the back end of that Suzuki. Was it as an exhaust pipe or was it tire trouble? Remember, he went on to intermediate tires. He's looking down at the back of the machine. They are working at something at the back of the machine. What was the problem? Well, I changed, I changed the tire oil on the line to an intermediate because I, th I thought it was going to rain, but it was going okay. I, just, I was up the front and I dropped back a little bit because I didn't want to make the tire too hot, yeah. you know. So I thought if I'm just staying in the hunt, you know, until the, the end of the race, the tire won't shred, and I may stand in the front. Then I could feel something bumping on the back of the bike and I wasn't sure what it was. Then I got a signal to say the exhaust pipe had come unbolted and yes. it was banging on the wheel and that's... You weren't actually aware that it was the pipe was the problem? No, I could feel something banging. It's like someone banging the back of the bike with a hammer, you know, but I wasn't, I didn't know what it was. Well, the fact that you went on to the intermediate tires and the other two boys were mm. still on the slicks, did you find that it was any disadvantage to you? It would have been towards the end of the race, that's why I was backing off a little bit, so it's not to get it too hot. But at the end of the race, it would have been it would have been impossible with the intermediate. So this year the race of the year is not yours. Anyway. No, it wasn't last year either, never mind. So two years in a row and bad luck, Barry Sheen. But here we have the race leader now coming up to half distance in this 54-mile race. And it's still Pat Hennon on the works Suzuki, leading Mick Grant on the works Kawasaki. The battle now is also on for third place between Dave Potter and Stan Woods. And it's Woods. Stan Woods in third place, number 15. And we have, of course, number 31, Patrick Pons, the Frenchman, in between Woods and Potter. So Stan Woods leads Pons with number 8, Potter and the broad Yamaha, back there in fifth position. Number 30, Number 30, of course, is Christian Saron, leading from John Williams, the other Frenchman, Christian Saron. And back at the S's, it's still Hennon. Hennon and Grant picking up a back marker. Hennon again into the Herpin, riding immaculately. The same line every time, the front wheel in the air at the same position. And Grant is not letting him get away. Grant is still with him. So number three, the American, Pat Hennon determined to do what Steve Baker did last year, Steve Baker did last year, and win the race of the year. Dave Potter goes up the inside of Woods at the Herpin, and Woods goes up the inside of Potter, while, while number 31 goes right round the outside of both of them. Patrick Pons, Patrick Pons is now in third place, the Frenchman. Patrick Pons up into third, ahead of number 15, Stan Woods. So with the French rider leading both the English riders, away they go round this very fast. Gerard Fain, Pons in the lead of the two of them. And down goes Pons, Pons is down, he slides across the track. The machine goes clear of him, he hits the straw bales, but he picks himself up, he waves to the crowd, and Patrick Pons, after that sensational start, is perfectly okay. What actually happened, the back end of the machine slid away, and at the speed he was going, he couldn't control it, but he's quite all right as he goes over and speaks to Roger Marshall, who came down earlier in the race. And the race still goes on. The yellow flag is being waved to warn other riders that one rider has gone under the grass and is down. Number 15, Stan Woods now up into third place, and Dave Potter still on his tail in fourth. Number 30, Christian Saran, the other French one, was still in there. Potter, Potter now in fourth place, chasing for all he knows. And he takes his left arm off the machine. A slight bit of cramp sitting in there. The leader, Pat Hennon, still ahead of Mick Grant by some 30, 40 yards. The Herpin completely quiet now. Such is the lead that these two boys have over the next ten. The tail enders still going around. Stan Woods, of course, in third place. Chester, Stanley Woods, there he is, number 15, Stan Woods in third place, well and truly established, now that Patrick Pons is gone, Dave Potter, trying all he knows to get back with him, and Mick Trump, number 10, comes out of Gerard, still on the heels of the hunt, still with the leader, Pat Hennon, as he goes into the Lake Aces, so it's Hennon, Grant, 
well out ahead of third place man, Stan Woods. Stanley Woods still followed closely by Dave Potter. So we've two races going on here now, one for the lead and one for third place. Hennon round the hairpin again, the same line every time. Grant still on his heels, but there are slower riders up ahead. Is this going to create an upset? And one of those riders is John Newbold. There's John Williams. Ron Haslam. Three very, very fast men about to be lapped. 15 Woods still ahead. 15 Woods is still ahead of Dave Potter on the Ted Broad Yamaha. And they're also getting mixed up with back markers. Woods goes over to the left, then he changes his mind and goes to the right. And Potter has taken advantage of that mistake and moved ahead of Woods. Dave Potter is up into third place now. Stan Woods in fourth as they swoop round and you can see that even the tail enders are on machines that are almost as powerful as the leaders. Hennon in the hairpin, a very wide line, a very, very wide line and he allows Grant to close up a little bit and they're really mixed up with the tail enders now. And the tail enders, of course, being men of the caliber of John Williams, Ron Haslam and John Newbold. John Newbold now in the lead of the group. And there's Woods again, Potter trying to run the outside him, he can't quite make it. He has to pull in behind him once more as they go into the devil's elbow. Pat Hennon has pulled away from Grant a little bit because of that mix-up. And John Newbold has become the meat in the sandwich now. John Newbold, who is being lapped, is now lapping as good as the leaders. And he's keeping Mick Grant back that little bit. Grant must be cursing under his breath as he tries to get back with the leader, Pat Hennon. Newbold is holding him out. In fact, Newbold is pulling away a little bit from Grant and trying to close himself on Hennon. Even Hennon taking advantage of this situation has now moved up a gap and opened up a gap of some 20 yards. There's Hennon, Newbold, Grant. So, John Newbold suddenly gets a new lease of life at three-quarter distance. He gets a new lease of life, but unfortunately, he's making things very awkward for Mick Grant. Newbold with his knee right on the deck of the S's switches his machine from right to left and there's Woods, Woods is ahead of Potter and Potter is some three machines length back making Ted Broad his sponsor very very happy back in the pits Ted Broad will know that Dave Potter is trying all he knows out here in the circuit to get his Yamaha ahead of Stan Woods but can he do it? he's still with them as they go away wheels come up in the air again the back ends twitch as the power churns on down they come into the start and finish area, and it's still Woods, ahead of Potter. Woods and Potter again, in third and fourth places. And already we look for the leader. The leader must be coming right now, there he is. Pat Hennon, number three, is coming up to close up even on the third and fourth place man. And Grant has got past Newbold, the road is clear again, he can have another go. He can have another go at the leader, Pat Hennon, having got John Newbold out of his way. There goes number four, Ron Haslam, on the Ferro Yamaha, entered by Mal Carter, that bright and cherry sponsor from Halifax. Grant trying it again to get back with the leader, Hennon. And Potter has slipped through on the inside of Stan Woods. Potter is back into third place, Stan Woods in fourth. There they go again, Potter is maintaining that little lead. He has a very slender lead over Stan Woods. Look at the knees come out as they come down, two gears for Gerard's Ben. Hennon again peers in view and there comes Grant, but Hennon is going away from Grant. Hennon is really going away from Grant. He's now got the fastest lap at 97.98 miles an hour, 3.2 miles an hour slower than Steve Baker's lap record last year of 101.25. But Hennon is well on his way to prove that America are still producing wonderful riders. Is it going to be the second year in a row that America has won this Maori Park race of the year? And back to third place. Third place is still Dave Potter in the Broad Yamaha. And still in fourth place at Stan Woods, the Chester rider. But he's trying to get back with him. And here they come, here they come. It's the leader, Pat Hennon. Ryan approaching the last lap. He must be out on the last lap now. Number three, Pat Hennon, what a wonderful race he's ridden. 
and he's pulling away now from Mick Grant. Mick Grant knows that the race is virtually over and no way in one lap can he pull back the vital seconds needed to get out this winner position. But what a wonderful race Grant has ridden on the Kawasaki. No teammate to help him as Titchburn went out at the very start with a machine that wouldn't start. And now they come under the Herpin for the last time. It's still Pat Hennon in the lead. For Suzuki GB on the work Suzuki. Down he goes round the devil's elbow with Grant in second place. And there's the checkered flag for American. Pat Hennon taking the race of the year. And is he elated? Look at his arm up in the air as Mick Grant gets the checkered flag. He's overjoyed to win the race of the year, two years in a row to America. Mick Grant gives a gentle wave to the crowd, but Pat Hennon goes wild. And he reaches out and shakes hands with Mick Grant as they go around Gerard. A thousand five hundred pound cut under his belt. And is he elated? Look at this, he's even standing on the seat, kicks his right leg in the air. But back we go for that fantastic third place dice between Dave Potter and Stan Woods, and it's Potter. Potter crosses the line in third place with Stan Woods from Chester in fourth. What a dice they've had. All right, all right. What was your feeling once Barry had dropped out in the 16th lap? Uh, when I was given signs that he did drop out, I was really curious as to why. You know, Barry hasn't had best luck this year with mechanics like at um, Silverstone with the Grand Prix. Uh, at the beginning, it was, you know, I knew it would be important to get a good start. And yeah. then also with the weather changing, Bay Area, it changed over to um, wet weather towers. And so, you know, of course, I was starting to think to myself because it was getting wetter and wetter. And if it actually maintained as wet as it did at the beginning, he would have had the advantage and it would have been his race, provided he had no mechanical defects. Sure. Um, but then it turned out um, 10 laps, 7 laps, something like that. It started drying, and then it became my fever. And how do you the, feel now? I feel <laughs> delighted, man. Fantastic. Woo! Pat Hennon this year, last year Steve Baker, American 76 and America 77. Pat Hennon will come back again next year and spend a full season in Europe, but we hope that next year the race of the year will give him an even better challenge from Britain. But an elated Pat Hennon, the winner of the 1977 Maori Park race of the year, waves his American Stetson hat high in the air and shows with the laurel wreath round his neck that America are still producing top-class riders.